Hey Creekside Bridge, it's Miss Carly and it's two, it's 2021. Happy New Year. I hope you guys had a great Christmas break and I hope that you are feeling energized and excited about 2021. I know that 2020 was not the best year for a lot of people, but if you were watching last week's video, uh, I encourage all of you to think about 2021 and think about it in terms of the good things that happened and the bad things that happened and to kind of just let those things be in front of you and be real. If you're a writer, you could write it down in a journal. Um, but you know, to even make a list of hard things, difficult things, unexpected, bummer things, and then make a list of good things, joyful things, maybe unexpected, awesome things. And if you have that either list in your mind or list on paper to take that and even use it in prayer, like here, God, here are the difficult things that were not my favorite about 2020. Um, or were just downright horrible and difficult for me and hand those over to God in prayer and be honest with him because he can handle it. He's not afraid. You don't have to be all proper in your prayers and therefore hide the hard things. You can, in your prayers, be honest with God and tell him the things that are hard and he will see that and meet you there and hopefully teach you or recover you or comfort you or just flood you with love even in the hard things. And then you can look at the good things and say, thank you, God, for the awesome things that happened. And one of my biggest prayers for 2020, which I hope you guys feel the same way, is please, God, help me remember the good things from 2021 and from 2020. I don't want to only remember the difficult things just because they were big and surprising or more difficult than anything I'd been through before. I want to also remember and maybe even remember more the good things that happened in 2020. So hopefully that was a good exercise for you and it helped your heart and your mind and your spirit. And today we're going to reread that verse from Isaiah that we did last week. And then we're also going to read a verse from the New Testament. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Isaiah, put your finger in Isaiah, and then you can also put your finger in 2 Corinthians. So you can pause this video and take the time to find those spots, or you can just listen because I'm about to read them to you. So the first verse is Isaiah 43, 19. And this verse says, I am about to do something new. It is beginning to happen even now. Don't you see it coming? I'm going to make a way for you to go through the desert. I will make streams of water in the dry and empty land. So God was giving hope to the Israelites that even though they were in a place of darkness and difficulty, that God would still be doing something new. And this streams of water in the dry and empty land is kind of what inspired me this time. Not just is God doing something new. He's seeing the difficult place that people were in, which is like the desert. And he's bringing streams of water. So you can imagine if you were in the desert, how great would it be to find a stream of water, right? And water does a lot of cool things in nature. It gives us um, the things we need to thrive. It also heals, um, you know, dry, empty land. It's kind of how my property looks right now. The summer here, you know, makes it really dry. And now we have water coming and my grass is greener and the plants are kind of restoring themselves and getting ready for next spring. And they're kind of hitting like a reset. And that's what water does for land. It can also do that for our spirits. We've been through something difficult. And that's a metaphor for God giving us what we need after we've been through something difficult and bringing us to a place of healing and even thriving. So I like that part there. Then we'll switch now to 2 Corinthians 5.17. And this verse also is using the concept of new. In Isaiah, we had God doing a new thing. And in this time, this verse in 2 Corinthians, we're going to talk about God doing something new in us. So this verse says, when anyone lives in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. This is like a perfect idea for the new year. Looking into 2021, I don't know if you guys do New Year's resolutions, but if you do, you should pause the video right now. And whoever you're watching this with, if it's your family or your parents or your grandparents or your dog, whatever, your friend, um, pause this video and tell the person you're watching it with, if you have a new year's resolution, some people don't like new year's resolutions. Some people love them. Some people are kind of off and on depending on the year. So go ahead and pause it and say, if you have a new year's resolution, or if you plan to even make one and then come back. Okay. So in this verse, in the second Corinthians verse, 
Anyone who lives in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. So that can we can work with that with our what we just did this last week of thinking about the good and bad things of 2020. Well, 2020 is done. It's over. It has gone. A new year is coming, and we can look forward to new new things and maybe new things we're going to try, maybe hopefully great new things that God is going to do. And we can bring God into all of that daydreaming and that imagination. And so on that note, um, something I just learned this last year, I'm, I was 39 years old and I learned for the first time, or I guess I was encouraged for the first time to use my imagination for God. I don't know if you guys have ever thought about that or heard of that, but our imagination is a place where things happen for us that are imaginary, right? They're not real things. We can daydream fun, crazy, silly things, right? Um, there's things, fun things that people have created from their imaginations, like unicorns or, uh, I don't know, all these cool shows we watch that have these imaginary fun things. So our imagination can be this beautiful kind of like artistic place. And God gave that to us for a reason. And we can use our imaginations with God. And remember at Christmas, I talked about this two weeks ago, it was said that Jesus would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. So God wants to be with us in everything, in the difficult things, in the happy things, in the everyday things, in the big things. And he even wants to be with us or can be with us in our imaginations and in our daydreams. We can invite him in and have him be a part of it and be with us in that. And I just... I had never thought about that until this last year. And that's one of the reasons I started loving guided prayers was because people were inviting me to use my imagination and use my artistic side to incorporate that into prayer and to bring God into it and have it be a really cool spiritual thing instead of just a silly thing that I kind of laugh about like, oh, in my imagination, this, this, this. I always wish I had a magic wand, you know, but that doesn't have to be silly. I can also use my imagination in a way that is cool and real and inviting God into it and making it spiritual. So we're going to do that in our guided prayer right now. So I'm going to invite you guys to close your eyes with me and I'm going to pause sometimes during the prayer to give you time to pray yourself, to think, to listen. So there's going to be some quiet parts in this prayer and I don't want it to be awkward. I want it to be something that you can use for your true prayer time, not just borrowing my prayer, but making it your own. So uh, we're going to go into that right now. Go ahead and close your Bibles, close your eyes, and just soak this in for a minute. God, please be with us right now and help us to clear all of our distractions out of our minds and help us to really see you for who you are and to see 2020 for what it really was. Um, we invite you into our imaginations. We invite you into our dreams right now while we look forward into 2021. So I'm going to read Isaiah 43, 19, and just keep your eyes closed and listen, and then we'll turn this into a prayer. Isaiah 43, 19. I am about to do something new. It is beginning to happen even now. Don't you see it coming? I am going to make a way for you to go through the desert. I will make streams of water in the dry and empty land. God, we thank you for the fact that you are with us even in the dry places, even in the desert, even in moments that feel difficult or hard or angry for us. And God, right now, we acknowledge that 2020 was hard and I want you right now in your prayer to take time to imagine God in front of you and imagine telling him or giving him everything that was hard about 2021 or anything that's hard for you right now. Go ahead and spend some time telling God what was difficult and imagine yourself handing it over into his hands and telling him you trust him.
God, just like you promised to bring streams of water into the dry desert, we ask that you would bring us healing and recovery and that we can let go of the things that are old and the things that you don't want us to carry or think about or worry about anymore. Now I'm going to read 2 Corinthians 5.17. When anyone lives in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. Now, God, we want to take a moment and we want to ask you and just listen to what you say about what things we need to let go of that are old or what kinds of things do you want us to heal from and recover from or just do differently in this next year. So take a moment right now to pray about how the old things are things you can let go of and what God wants you to be done with after 2020. Now, in the same way, God, we see that something new is coming, that you are doing something new or that you created us into a new creation. So right now, God, we ask you, what is a new thing that you want us to do or create? Or what's a new attitude or maybe a new way you want us to view something? God, are there any new ideas that you want to share with us for this new year? Any new things you want us to look forward for or to just try to do differently in this new year, God. God, we thank you so much for who you are and all the things you've done in the past. We look forward to this new year and we ask that you would please give us a new heart, make us a new creation in whatever way you want us to be. Um, and God, I just pray that you would help us to use our imaginations and use our daydreams as we look forward with hope. Use these things for the things that you want because we want what you want and we want to continually be more and more like Jesus. We love you very much and we trust you and we look forward to everything you're going to do in this new year. In Jesus' name, amen.